Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to another YouTube video and today we're actually going to be looking at my OBS and streaming settings and what it is that I use when streaming on Twitch through OBS Studio. I only use the plain OBS Studio. I used to use Streamlabs but I used to have a lot of issues with that. So now I just stick to the vanilla OBS Studio. Today I'm going to go through and show you guys what sort of settings I use when streaming and what I found works best for my internet speeds and for quality and production as well. Let me flip over to the screen right now. We're going to do the recording gameplay screen. Click settings and I start running you guys through exactly what it is that I use uh, on OBS. So we'll start with the output. All right, make sure you click advanced at the top so it shows and displays everything. As you can see on for streaming, I use my X264, which is my CPU. Uh, I have a Ryzen 7 3700X, which is great for both streaming and gaming at the same time. Really, really solid uh, CPU and Ryzen and AKA AMD are always known for um, multitasking due to several cores. And they're just great for doing several things at once without, you know, putting too much pressure on your computer. So it's the X264. Uh, we enforce the streaming service encoding settings. I rescale my output at 720. Of course, this can be changed to your specification depending on what you want. For me, I personally prefer to stream at 720. This is what I was advised via a you know audio video specialists. But some people want to stream at 1080p, especially if you're a partnered or at 900p, depending on whatever sort of quality you're looking to get. So 720p rate control at Z CBR. Not sure what this actually stands for, but I've always been told that CBR is the best one to use. Bit rate I keep at a standard 6,000 kbps. Yes, this is actually the highest bit rate that you can stream at if you're a non-partnered streamer. If you are partnered, you can stream at 8,000, but I'm not sure if that's a little bit too much overkill or too much pressure on both the computer and the specs that you might be using. So I stream at a nice 6K. That's really good for FPS games and just games that take like a lot of movement and a lot of things that are going on. Stops it from looking pixelated and keeps it clean for all the viewers that are watching. Keyframe interval is set to 2. CPU pre-usage is set to fast. The higher it is, is the less CPU it takes. So the slower you take this, the more CPU pressure it's going to take. So fast is usually a good middle one for that in terms of CPU rate and CPU usage as well. Profile is set to high. Keep the tune to none. And then X264 options. This was given to me again by a video specialist, which seems to work really well for me. I'm not sure exactly what it does, but I've never had any issues with it. So I keep it in there if you guys ever want to take this and copy it into your own settings as well. For audio, of course, I've got my desktop audio coming through my uh, headset that I use and microphone is done via the HyperX Quadcast. Apart from that, I haven't really touched anything else in my audio settings and it's all kept to standard. For video, we're on at the base resolution. Of course, it captures it in 1080 and scales it down to 720 as what that's what people are going to be watching it on on Twitch. The day on scale filter is always kept to Lanxos, which is the highest one for sharp and scaling at 36 samples. And your common FPS values are at 60 to stream at 60 FPS as well. Okay, in advanced settings, process priority is set to normal, color space is 709, color range is partial, and the color format is NV12. Stream delay for me is turned off, and one thing that would be worth checking as well, and this will be done in a separate clip, is make sure you go on to Twitch, and make sure you're streaming at a low latency. If you don't want there to be a delay on stream and you'll be able to catch messages as quick as possible and also reply to people as quick as possible without there being an issue of a delay. It does slightly cut the quality, but it's worth it if you're very interactive and you're looking to interact with your audience. Okay, so make sure this is off and then make sure low latency is turned on for Twitch as well. And this is where you guys can find your low latency setting on Twitch. You can click on account settings. It will bring you to your page. You click channels and videos. Scroll down very slightly. You can see here you've got your latency mode. Low latency allows for best for near real time interaction with viewers. So you'll see messages and people will see your replies as soon as possible. So I would highly recommend to go with this low latency mode over keeping on uh, normal latency itself. In terms of network, everything is ticked for these three boxes in terms of changing bit rate to manage congestion, uh, enabling a new networking code. And again, here's low latency mode for, uh, for OBS Studio. Sources is ticked for the enable browser source hardware acceleration and the hotkeys are always on disabled as well. If you guys are interested to know recording formats, when I do recording, I make sure that everything goes into an OBS recording folder. I do all my recordings on OBS as well. Okay, all my recordings done in MP4. It's encoded off the X264. I record in 1080p, of course, because I'm not streaming at the time, so it's a lot less pressure on my computer, so I'm happy to record at 1080p to get the best quality possible. Rate control again is CBR. Bit rate is actually 60,000 for recording to get the best quality possible, as obviously you're not gonna be dealing with um, having to stream at the same time, so it's a lot less pressure on your computer. Keyframe interval again is two, 
CPU preset is for this one is ultra fast, profile high, tune is up to film, and then again, I believe this is exactly the same as it was for streaming as well, okay? So that's pretty much all the settings covered today on what I've been using. Ever since I have changed these settings, I've had nothing but good reviews and people saying that they like the stream quality and that the stream runs, you know, really smoothly most of the time. So if you're looking to stream at 720 and you have a fairly decent CPU to run off, these are definitely the settings that I would recommend for you. So give them a try and let me know how you get on with it. All right, good luck, guys.